I promised today to start talking a little bit about garden design and I'm going to start with one I one of I think the most important fundamentals and that's the concept of entry and how we present a departure from one space and the entrance into another space. So that's what I want to talk about today but first I want to do a little commercial. Um, a week from tomorrow which will be Saturday I think it's the 21st at Mockingbird Manor I'm going to do a book signing from one to three. So if you wanna come in for a weekend from out of town, if you live in rural Oklahoma or anywhere and you wanna do Western and hit Mockingbird Manor, one of my favorite stores, and talk to me, buy a book, I'll sign up for you, just make kind of a nice weekend out of it, then by all means, put that on your calendar. And we will also be putting up a chart with all of my upcoming book signings pretty soon. I'm gonna be in Tulsa, I'm, gonna, I'm scheduling something hopefully in Dallas and maybe even in Denver. So we're working on those right now, trying to fit them in with all of the other kind of gardening things that have to be done this time of year. Also, we're gonna try, Stuart and I, Stuart's not feeling well today, so we're gonna try to get through this pretty quickly. But Stuart, I think on Sunday, we need to try to do another, uh, another uh, YouTube Live where we visit with other people and then we will be scheduling some for members only so that's because we had such overwhelming response last time that'll give some of you an opportunity to kind of move up in the queue and have me answer your specific questions but we'll talk about that more on Sunday. So today I want to talk about the concept of entry which is one of those intuitive design principles that you already know and all all I'm going to do is just sharpen the point of your pencil a little bit. I talk about it in my book um, in the section appropriately entitled Entry. And you can see how this is how my entryway into the potage used to look because this just aged out, the pergola aged out, and some of the roses did as well, as did these boxwood. I made kind of a more open conceptual change. This feels, it's, it just feels much less confining, much less claustrophobic to me. The air circulation is better, and it's one of those kinds of things that while this design looked great at certain points in the year, and ever so beautiful and dramatic. For consistency throughout the year, I found that this, with just the posts coming into the potage, is a much more long-lasting and I think handsome entry point into this kitchen garden. So what do I mean by entrance? Well, creating a really good entrance, and in this case, I have used wooden pilasters. They define this space. They tell the garden visitor that we're making a change in tone, in mood, in function, from one area of the garden into another area of the garden. It might even be the most perfect example of that is the entrance up onto your porch or the entrance into your backyard. And what we want to do is make a very good first impression and be very welcoming. Now, they, you know, sometimes say you, you don't have a second chance to make a first impression. Well, in this case, you do because you can change your entryway and you can style it according to, and I think this is very important, when considering your entryway into whatever area of your home and your outside garden rooms, you do want to make sure that it's consistent with the style and the decor and the architecture of your house and also of your garden. You wanna make sure that it is I think kind of experiential. In other words, so when you enter into my potage, for example, it's experiential in that you can kind of hear the birds, you can smell what's growing in this area. Sometimes it's a fragrant rose, sometimes it's lavender. It might be, it, that might change throughout the seasons. The light changes as you come from this place into this area, and there's a subtle grade change. So in many ways, it's not just a passage, it's an experience. So if you've 
try to think of your entry points from one area of your garden into another in that context, I think it makes it that much more memorable. The other thing is, is it really defines this space. So another garden principle I'm gonna talk about is enclosure, but the entry point also separates and creates an individual garden space, or as I call them, garden rooms. So for example, I think of this as the kitchen. So I am very much defining this space as the kitchen garden, and it serves a different function as the other areas in my garden. So for more specifics, you can of course get my book and you can read about it. But I also want you to think through, and this relates back to having second chances, it's not a static thing. Um, now maybe in grander homes that might have, which would dictate a grand entrance with maybe some expensive statuary or huge expensive pots or something very, very statuesque and grand. Mine is a smaller garden and it has more of a cottagey garden feel. It's very much an English garden. And so I want that tone to resonate not only in the style of my garden but definitely in the entrances. So consequently my entrance features, in this case these two large pots, can change over time. So these posts remain in place but I can change up and express seasonality with what I put in these pots. I've got them elevated to make them a little bit more dramatic and a little bit more statuesque. So as I kind of go through these design principles, I want to show a project along with it. And one thing I did, I talked to you guys before about as a, a gardening risk worth taking, I just put a bunch of poppy seeds into these large containers. And actually they did much better than I expected, though the blooms are smaller and they are not nearly as impressive as they would be had I grown them in a garden bed. But because the winter was so dry, they were having difficulty germinating there. So now I, I like these, but because we have had a rapid change in the weather, it got very hot very quickly, I'm going to make some changes. So I'm going to take out, I take out that plant support. Let me get in Stuart's way over here. And I'm gonna remove all of these poppies and I'm just gonna compost them. Now they haven't depleted the soil very much because they haven't been in here very long. So the quality of this soil really is not that bad. But this project will not take long and that leads me to my question of the day which is how do you guys express seasonality in your various entrances to your front porch say to your pool area to where you have your raised beds how do you change your entrance over time to express the changes of the seasons which i think is one of the most one of the most fun things about gardening is that you can kind of mix it up. And I've got some stakes in here. I'm going to loosen this soil a little bit. Now, I said earlier that I had already planned on changing out. I'm going to take off my sunglasses here, which is why it's good to have pockets. Um, I'm going to change out these poppies with something that will be more statuesque and a little bit more enduring for not only the summer, because this gets really, really brutal exposure, and I need something that's pretty tough that will fit the style of the garden, but that will, I think, be handsome year round. And so I'm going to put some of these Southern Living. These are Gold Oakland, Golden Oakland Hollies. These are part of the Southern Living Plant Collection. I love these. You may have seen that they were on my front porch residing rather temporarily um, for a while for my spring show. And Stuart, show something pretty because I forgot my hand trowel. 
you can see how things have changed, but also notice that I have pretty much finished pruning the boxwood hedge in the potage. And I'm starting to transition out some of my cool season vegetables with some of my warm season vegetables. So I'm just going to loosen up this soil because I really, I don't want to take out too much of it. I just want to take out enough to be able to introduce that holly. And what I like about this is if I so choose, I can underplant or create a skirt of color around this holly if I want to for the summer. If I don't want to, if I just want to leave it very simple, I can mulch it with my gravel. Um, I can even, and this is something I'm considering right now for this summer and certainly for the winter. And that's, Stuart, don't you think it would be, it would be charming to have twinkle lights oh, yeah. on these at nighttime going back into the potage? You can tell Stuart's got kind of a <laughs> Stuart's got kind of a rough voice this morning. Stuart, you are a trooper to be here when you don't feel very well. Always, always a trooper. The show must go on, Anything Stuart. The show must go on. I I did. I love my job. I know you do. I know <laughs> I can you do. It do. Like this and feel, feel okay yes, <laughs> and and I tried. I did. I not try to mother you and take care you of you, did. Stuart. You I did. yes. So, okay, so I'm just going to do a check on this and see how big this root ball is. And I'm going to guess this is going to be a rather compacted root ball. Well, maybe not too bad. It's seen worse. It's seen worse. Okay, let me see. Now, I know some of you will say, Oh, there's probably an easier way to do this. There's probably a more efficient way to do this. And there may be, but you know what? This is the way I do it. I know I'll get it done. And sometimes I practice what I call intentional inefficiency. Stuart, do you remember, remember I do. what that is? And that's sometimes when I will be intentionally inefficient. In other words, I will require myself, I'm just loosening up this root ball, you guys, so that the roots don't grow in a circle. They grow and penetrate into the surrounding pot. Um, but I'm intentionally inefficient and I will make multiple trips say back to my potting area or into the house or from the front yard to the backyard and I do that for a couple of different reasons sometimes because multiple trips is easier in terms of carrying things because it's more lightweight and it's a little bit easier but also because I track most of you noticed I have a, I have an eye watch on and I track my steps on a daily basis. And that helps me get my steps in doing something I really enjoy, which is gardening. And so instead of maybe walking on a treadmill or walking in the neighborhood um, or running in the neighborhood, I can get in my steps in the garden. And I like that. So I call that something I call intentional inefficiency, <laughs> which probably seems kind of stupid, but it works for me. It helps me stay in shape and it helps me in my own way be productive and, and kind of kill two birds with one stone. Now this looks like there might be a lot of roots in here and there are, but those are mostly roots from the tulips that I had in here. I want to make sure that I plant this deeply enough, but not too deeply. And I also want to make sure that I center it in the middle of the pot. 
loosen that up. Okay, now Stuart, can you tell, is that about in the center? Yeah, on this side it looks that way, yeah. Okay. It might be slightly to my okay, right. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is step back here. Oh yeah, it definitely is a little bit to the right. To your right. Okay, stage right. <laughs> okay, did that do it? Uh, it's better, yeah. That needs to be even Just better? Slightly, like an inch, maybe. Okay. How's that? That's pretty good. That's pretty good, okay. Now, these are lightweight pots, you guys, and I can move them for the most part myself. And I've also added lots of perlite and things to this this is new potting soil that i have added perlite to and by the way this may not be the most efficient tool to use for this <laughs> but it kind of works for me and it was already back here and I'm trying to do this quickly. It's a shovel. For Stuart. <laughs> yes, it's a shovel. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. It serves its purpose. You know what? We are just like cavemen and we're finding our tools where we can get them. Okay. Now that's kind of located where I want it. Is it straight, Stuart? Right back up. This is why it's helpful uh, well, sometimes. It's tilted, it's tilted. The top is Okay, well, here's what I'm going to do. Oh, yeah. It's, it's torquing. <laughs> Stuart, it's leaning. There. Now it's kind of leaning the other way. Now. That's well, in between the last two positions. There you go. Okay. The other thing is, you can always, thankfully, you can always reposition it after you water it while the soil and the root ball and everything are still pliable and flexible. The other thing is sometimes the pot needs to be torqued a little yeah, bit. So, sometimes, I know, we, <laughs> Stuart has helped me do that more than once. He speaks from experience. But even doing this in a rather inefficient manner, it still didn't take that long, did it, Stuart? And I have my trusty steed, my wheelbarrow here. Oh, I also put some Osmocote, some of this, some slow-release fertilizer in here. And, okay, now, Stuart, out of my way, out of my way. Part of this also looks a little bit wonky because it needs a little bit of pruning on it. Can you see that this side yeah, is a little too leafy? So, okay, so I'm gonna water that in. And then if I wanted, if I wanted to really do something special, I could leave this in place. I could form fit this and prune it according to the shape of this plant support that one is one of the original inspiration pieces from my qvc line where i've got the much more beautiful again this is a light pot so i can kind of torque it around ah that i think that may have done it Stuart. yep okay so i will make sure that i get these perfectly straight And then I will do this next one.
watering these in really well. And again, if they need a little bit of torquing or adjusting, I can do that while it's still wet. And I will also probably, Stuart, if you don't mind coming up here, look at how, see the soil will begin to settle some. And after it settles, I might even have to add a little bit more around the perimeter because I don't want that root ball to be exposed. Then again, I might wait and see if I'm going, at least for a short period of time, see if I want to underplant this with some seasonal color. What do you guys think? Thumbs up on seasonal color, thumbs down and just keep it more classic looking. I need to do a little bit of shaping on these and I need to put some plumber's tape on this so I don't waste water, but all of it is going back into the garden, I guess. Let me turn this off. And you can see how different it looks now. Let me step back and see how, what tweaking I need to do. Mostly the tweaking at this point is just some selective pruning on some things. And I will do that a little bit later. Um, but again, let me know whether you think I should add seasonal color or not. I could also add something like lemon thyme all around the base. I could add some kind of, of herb. Let me know your thoughts on that. I am undecided at this point. But I could also keep it very simple and just do my beloved gravel. Why? Let's all say it together. Because it keeps squirrels out, moisture in, and because I like the look of it. And there you go. So if you want to see again what it looked like when I had the poppies in, you can go to the community tab and look at some pictures I will post there. And this week I'm going to be posting a lot of pictures in the community tab. Um, make sure if you're available on Sunday to pay attention because Stuart and I, well, if we do it on Sunday, what time do we do it before at two? I think at two we'll probably do that again. Yeah, two central standard time. Thank you for pointing that out. But I think these look really beautiful. I love the way they echo the color of the golden barberry. Oh, you guys should have seen that big yawn Stuart just did. But the golden barberry I think looks beautiful and it really picks up the sunshine lagustrum in the flower beds and also the kind of yellowish tint of the boxwood as it comes out. And I think it makes for a, did you hear that? Did you hear? <laughs> I think it makes for a really beautiful statement making entrance into the garden that is befitting to my style of gardening and accomplishes what I really wanted to accomplish with this design principle of entry as a form of garden beautification. So there you go. I hope you got a few tips for your own garden. Well, it's all about being cool and comfortable this morning. I think I mentioned earlier that I was getting into house dresses because there's that kind of Transi transition state between when you first get up in the morning, you're in your pajamas and before you get dressed and you want to be um, presentable in case the irrigation guy comes or the yard man comes or somebody comes to the door, but you're not yet quite ready to get dressed. And that's where I think house dresses come in. Now, I got this one um, from the place in Santa Fe. And by the way, I'm looking at different styles. I'm ch kind of checking them out. Um, so I got this one in Santa Fe and it's just 100% linen. And then this apron comes from World Market. So it's perfect for the things that you need to do in the morning. If you're going out to harvest veggies or you're going out to cut some flowers, or in my case, I wanna do a little bit of light yard work. Um, so there you go. This is from World Market. My sunglasses are Ray-Ban. My earrings are some of those Atrio style earrings I love so much. And my hat, okay. If you're not familiar with the brand Coolabar, that's C-O-O-L-I-B-A-R, then you might want to familiarize yourself with it because they make sun protective clothing. So this sun hat has sun protection in it, but they also have shirts and pants and other 
other things like that that will protect your skin and have some kind of through the magic of technology have some kind of SPF in them um, and then my shoes shoes are just some of these foot form sandals that I got off of Amazon and yes I am going to treat myself to a pedicure this weekend by the way I love these aprons that have great big pockets because then you can carry your cell phone in this case because it's starting to get hot and steamy I can put a rag to wipe my face and like today I can put in my mic where I don't have to tuck it someplace uncomfortably so there you go there is my outfit of the day